It is now time for the World Championship 7 Tournament Round of 32, and with a 2-2 fight night record, Bloodsport made it in as the number 19 seed. Now we are going to fight the legendary Donald Hudson and his 3-1 season record robot, Lockjaw. Now, you may be thinking, what is the blade we use against Lockjaw for that fight? And I am here to tell you, this is not what the video is about. Instead, I'm going to explain what's in the f box! I am Rico, aka Pearl Grey, telemetry specialist for team bots and stuff, and this video is about our telemetry system, Flatline. In previous seasons, you may have noticed that Bloodsport has a tendency to slow down its weapon during fights. In many cases, it was because of errors our motor controllers had that prevented them from operating correctly. For World Championship 7, we wanted to minimize the downtime our weapon had, and one of the ways we hoped to do this was by tracking the health of the electronics inside the next iteration of Bloodsport. In our last fight of the fight night, which was the fight against Beta that night, Chris and Kenny pointed out right before the fight the box with a bright light I was holding at quite the height. This thing. This was Flatline, a part of the brand new and totally custom telemetry live monitoring and logging system. What is telemetry, you may ask? It is the measurement, recording, and transmission of what's going on inside of the robot. Inside of Bloodsport, we designed some custom electronics based on TNC 4.1 that could connect to the motor controllers, radio receivers, thermometers, and expansion sensors. They are about the size of a pack of gum. We could fit up to three inside the robot, one inside the weapons module, and one in each side of the drive. For World Championship 7, we decided to run them during matches only in the weapon system to reduce complexity and because the weapon system was the most prone to malfunctioning. The telemetry modules are capable of collecting this information, recording it into an internal SD card, and broadcasting the data wirelessly outside of the robot. We wanted to have multiple ways to record the data in case the SD card inside the robot was destroyed during the fight, or in case too much wireless interference or another malfunction prevented reading the data from outside the box. The communication protocol we used to transmit data from Bloodsport to Flatline was LoRa, which is short for Long Range. It is designed to send small amounts of data extremely far distances, up to 6 miles in perfect conditions, in a very small package. We wanted to use a protocol that we would be sure could penetrate through the robot's metal armor, the metal frame of the battle box, and the immense amount of radio interference from dozens of robots, hundreds of AV and filming equipments, and thousands of personal devices from the builders, spectators, and staff. Ribot, who similarly uses a live telemetry system, also uses protocol successfully which helped confirm our choice in using this. The case with the laptop I've been holding most of our matches is what we call Flatline. It was actually an older laptop and the keyboard started acting weird, so I put my mechanical keyboard on top of it, which is a Womir K87 with box jade switches and a mixture of XDA keycaps from a couple different sets. On top are three ESP32 lower boards that can read either three different telemetry modules or be set to redundantly read a single telemetry source with greater reliability. As we were only using the weapon telemetry module this season, it was set to redundant reading. You can see each module's antenna popping out the back of the flatline case. These three boards were connected to a main Teensy 4.1 that consolidated all the data, logged it to another SD card, and sent that data over USB to laptop. Everything is housed inside a Nanic 920 case. And that's where today's featured sponsor, Nanic, comes in. We are glad to have Nanic as our sponsor as they provided us a lot of military grade cases to house our parts, tools, and equipment through the cross country trip from Boston to Las Vegas. Nanic cases are the world's best protective cases built to organize, protect, and carry with a lifetime warranty and mil spec certification. Lightweight and ranging in multiple sizes, the Nanic protective cases shield valuable gear from big impacts, dust, and water, and come in sizes from the smartphone protecting Nano to the large 975, which could definitely hold two entire capybaras. We built Flatline into the 920 case because I am clumsy and didn't want Flatline to break if I accidentally dropped it, which I accidentally dropped several times, and it did not break, which means it worked. 
huge thanks to Nanook for their sponsorship. Be sure to visit their website at nanook.com. That is N-A-N-U-K.com. Just for a bit of trivia, there are a couple reasons we called it Flatline. It's a reference to when medical health monitors show a patient's heart has stopped, which has to do with blood, just like blood sport. I was also really into Cyberpunk 2077 last season, where flatlining is slang for surprise destruction of life. On the laptop was a Unity-based app that took the data and displayed it in two views, a spreadsheet-like layout of every value at once, and an at-a-glance view with a 3D visualization of the robot. We use Unity because it's a game engine, and video games look very cool. And one of our goals of our telemetry system was for it to not only be useful, but for it to look very cool doing it, inspired by cheesy Hollywood interfaces, except it was real. Our visualization app lets us choose the current blade equipped, which affects our weapon RPM and tip speed calculations, and marking the logs when the match starts and ends. Any errors that occurred would be loudly displayed on the screen. Here's a segment of what was on the screen while we fought BETA! If y'all are interested, we might figure out how to release full fight footage with the telemetry readings overlaid in the future. They have trapped in the corner, but Bloodsport escapes. Bloodsport checking their telemetry, trying to get back up to full speed, and they do! But man, there's no way around that silver wedge, Kenny. Justin Marple has been able to find space to spin up, but look at the hammer bot tracking him down like a free state. Uh oh! Oh! John Reed taking Bloodsport into the corner. Just misfires with the hammer. Yeah, and ramming Bloodsport into the sides of the arena is exactly what Vita wants to do to keep Justin Marple from spinning up just like this. And picture an enormous fight for both these bots sitting at two and one. Now, you may be wondering, how is any of this useful during the fight? Well, first of all, it looks cool, and looking cool is important. Secondly, if our weapon is having issues, we can look at the data to figure out why, and if this is something we can mitigate by waiting a bit before trying to run the weapon again, or if we should stop trying to run the weapon if it risks further damage, like a smoke cloud that looks bad for a judge's decision. Bloodsport can't self-write if its weapon isn't working correctly, so we may also drive more conservatively to prevent turning over and losing by knockout. What the telemetry is very useful for is during the build and testing phase. Bloodsport, like many of the teams at BattleBots, uses Vesks, which offer many cool settings to tweak, but are also very prone to errors and malfunctions if your settings aren't quite correct. Using the telemetry in the testing phase really helps us iron out these errors before we get into the box. At the end of the season, we performed some spin-up stress tests so we could see how much room we have to upgrade to bigger weapon motors. We are also upgrading to brushless drive and will be using the telemetry to help us tune the settings. Now that the round of 32 is here and we are fighting Lockjaw, how do you think our telemetry will change the outcome of the fight? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching!